Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. Today we're taking a look at the latest Warhammer 40,000 8th Edition uh, game update from the Psychic Awakening series, The Saga of the Beast. And I'm excited about this one because I play Space Wolves and Owen plays Orcs. Um, so this has some new stuff for our armies in it. So now what is this book? Uh, if you haven't been watching the Psychic Awakening reviews, um, you probably don't know that these are basically updates for the game, kind of patching codexes, introducing new units and some special rules as they go, and just updating really what's going, not really moving the timeline forward, but really just what's going on in the 40k universe in particular for all these individual factions. And for the Orcs and the Space Wolves, well, they've been getting it on. Um, and the reason they're getting it on is because the Orcs love the fact that the Gork's Great Grin, the big rift that's open and split the Imperium in half, uh, basically has endless fights coming out of it. There's demons and legions of chaos, and they just keep pouring in and pouring out. Uh, and the Orcs are having a great time. They're just, they're having the times of their lives. Gazgul keeps appearing everywhere all over the galaxy. Um, and he and Ragnar Blackmane form a rivalry because they basically kill each other. And the only thing that can be done is for Ragnar to turn to a Primaris Marine. It somehow saves his life. And they take, they, they full on uh, Richard Nixon, Futurama, Gasgol, and they build him a giant robot body for his head to be stuck into. So this book is 79 pages, um, 20 pages of background, uh, another 12 pages of missions, Crucible War stuff, and a battle zone playing in like forested worlds and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then we've got Space Wolf stuff, which for the most part is just a single new data sheet. We have Ragnar Blackmane being uh, up to the primary status, and then a bunch of um, just updates to the Space Wolf Codex, adding in all the Vanguard Marines, their discipline for psych powers, uh, their Warlord traits, all that thing, basic sort of like stuff that was in the Vanguard Codex when the, um, the Vanguard Marines came out, and now it's just kind of officially ratified in the Space Wolf's Codex. Uh, and then some new warlord traits for the vanguard, sort for the space wolves, stratagems, uh, some new stuff for their wolf priests, uh, along with a unique wolf priest power prayer they can do, and then updated point values and um, their super cool name generator. <laughs> and then for the orcs, we got Gazgul and Makari, and then they finally brought back the Big Mac. He's out of the indexes and. Um, the Big Mac with Custom Force Field, sorry, uh, is back as like a just a regular range model now. I'm sure they'll at some point bring his miniature back as well. And then some new clans, custom, uh, psych powers, uh, you get your specialist mobs, custom jobs for the um, the mech workshop, if anyone's actually using the mech workshop for 80 points. Uh, and then an orky name generator, which is pretty cool too. So let's dive in, take a look. Uh, for the most part, we're just going to flip through the background part because it's pretty short. And honestly, I've just given you the TLDR version of it where... Yeah, the orcs and the space wolves are fighting. The orcs are everywhere, like they always are. Look at this, it's like somebody blew their nose on the galaxy. Um, so yeah, all of these big skulls are where Gazgul's been reported to be, and the space wolves are like, it's not possible that he gets around like this, but of course it's possible, because he's a special character. Um, and then all these individual was my favorite one being Snaggard, the arch arsonist, the guy that destroys the... Uh, the Crimson Fist's homeworld, the Tyrant of Jaga, Wa Bork, the Grand Warlord, Wa Nazdreg, Kruldaka, Wazdaka, and the Archmaniac of Kalvarna, and then Wa Urgok and the Freebooter Enclaves. All of them just pouring around the galaxy, fighting everybody, um, and generally being a nuisance. And so Logan Grimnar says, we can't let this happen. He sends all the great companies out to fight them and tries to find Ragnar Blackmane. Uh, each of these individual uh, theater of war sort of like overviews is focused on different arc clan and different great company from the space wolves. They're pretty cool. Uh, we got some goths. We got some evil sons. The storming of Lakides. Lakides, I think. Uh, this one's all about the super sweet um, blood axes. So the the ones that want to be space wolves. And then Krom Dragon Gaze. That was actually a box set. We have the Death Skulls. The ambush at Narian Reef. The Bad Moons, the Siege of Gotgard, and then at the back here, come on now. Uh, this one is just regular orcs. <laughs> uh, snake bites, sorry. This is fighting snake bites. I, I, apparently, there's no pictures of snake bites anymore, so they just put down a space instead. And then I love this section. It's not really, it's funny because this one in particular, it briefly mentioned orcs, but like doesn't really focus on orcs. The previous ones were all kind of about the same faction. This one's kind of about a bunch of different factions. Like this one's about like Eldar. I like this one a lot because it's like a, a psychers basically emerging during like a, orc, a, a dark Eldar invasion. They're like killing all their friends. And then her eyes like light into fire, like kill everyone. And then they have to kill her because she turns on the humans. And the last one's about Gazgul, but they're just these cool like little transcripts and stuff. And then missions. So the Theater of War, you can see a beautiful color section here. There's Big Gaz and the new Primaris Ragnar. Lovely models. And of course, designed to fight together. They've been posed basically to fight each other. 
um, the Theater of War for Forest Worlds. Now the Forest Worlds are pretty crazy actually. Um, everyone's uh, it, like cannot target infantry or swarms unless you're within 12 inches of them because they're in um, unless they moved uh, sorry advanced in the previous movement phase or made a shooting attack because you can't see in the undergrowth and then falling trunks uh, if they hit for an attack made with a ranged weapon with a strength characteristic of six or more targets an enemy unit in your army uh, and rolls a one roll a die on a one the attack fell to nearby tree and is falling into your unit the unit suffers a mortal wound so you actually shoot a tree down and hurt yourself and then for two CPs, you can fade away. Basically, you can pull your battlefield or your unit off the table and redeploy it um, in any of your subsequent movement phases, more than nine from the enemy, and wholly within 18 of the, the marker they fade away from. So you like fade back into the trees. And the idea is that their space wolves and the orcs are fighting lots of forest planets. Cool mission, drawing out the beast. So basically like trying to get the attacker to come fight you. Armored interdiction. And cleanse the hall where you fight outside a spaceship, which is kind of cool. And then your Space Wolves section. All right, so Space Wolves. Um, what do we got in here? We've got new and updated units. So it's the, all the stuff for the Vanguard and for Ragnar. Uh, updated abilities and weapons, your Battle Forged Army, Vanguard Warlords, Stratagem, Psychic Powers, Ladies of Battle uh, for the Wolf Priests, your Relics for the Fang. Now what's interesting is this is the first one of these Space Wolves or Space Marine ones where the Relics aren't like also split between here's how you give your sub chapters stuff because the Space Wolves don't have any sub chapters. The, the, the Wolf Brothers were the only one and they got excommunicated for being freaks. Uh, and then your point values, because they're all redone, which I'm not going to go through individually. I will, I will hold them up. You get a look for yourselves. Uh, and then a name generator, which I will totally try out. And then we got Ragnar and his story, what happened to him, uh, and all the new stuff that's been added on. So they get, just like all Space Marines now, Angels of Death, and they should know Fear, Bolter Discipline, and Shock Assault, so they've got that on top of it. And they get Combat Doctrines. So they're like real boy Space Marines now, which means they get the Devastator Doctrine, Tactical Doctrine, and Assault Doctrine. Um, they've updated the auto bolt rifle, demolisher, flamestorm cannon, hand flamer, Icarus rocket pod, mastercrafted auto bolt rifle, mastercrafted stalker bolt rifle, and the stalker bolt rifle to go with the um, new Vanguard guys. And the Space Wolves Reaver squads all get the Phobos keyword. And here's Ragnar. Sweet. Uh, I'm only going to go through Ragnar because all this is the same as the, the Space Marine versions of themselves, apart from the individual keywords and stuff. So, for instance, um, Ragnar Blackmane, uh, he's a Space Wolf primary captain, basically. Six inch move, two plus, two plus, strength toughness four, six wounds, seven attacks, which is pretty crazy. Big, big behind him attack number, leadership nine, three plus save. He's got his bolt pistol, he's got his magic sword, Frostfang still, which is a plus two strength, minus four save, two damage weapon. So, strength six, minus four, two damage. Frag and crack, and then battle lust. When a friendly Space Wolf unit within six of this model and not within three of an enemy consolidates, it moves six instead of three. Warhowl, you can reroll charge rolls made for friendly Space Wolves units other than vehicle units if they're within six of this model when the roll is made. Uh, Your all Fenness, he's a captain, so reroll ones for attacks made by Space Wolves within six. And then Berserker Rage, he's plus three attacks from Shock Assault instead of plus one. So he has ten attacks on the charge. And then a four plus involved from his Belt of Rust. A uh, Wolf Priest and Terminator Armor is the same as a Space Wolf, uh, Space Marine Terminator Chaplain. Same with the Wolf Priest as a Chaplain. Uh, he gets his Healing Bombs, though, uh, which they both do. So you get your combo. Um, apothecary and chaplain. And your movement phase, the wolf priest can heal a single model. To do so, select a space wolves, infantry, biker, or cavalry unit within three. If that unit contains a wounded model, it can regain up to D3 lost wounds. A unit can only be targeted heal healing balls once per turn. And then you know all your litanies and stuff. Primaris wolf priest also gets healing bombs. And then your wolf lord and phobos armors, just a captain and phobos armor. Primaris battle leaders, same thing. Then priest and phobos armor. Intercessors or intercessors with the new updates, they can have a thunder hammer. Super sweet. Infiltrators are the same. Incursors are the same. In Victor Tactical War Suit. Suppressors and Eliminators are the same. Repulsor and Impulsor. And then it's Lords of Winter and War. So your new abilities. Um, if you are, uh, Space Detachment gains the Defenders of Humanity and Hunters Unleashed. In addition, units from your army with the Combat Doctrine ability gain the Savage Fury ability so long as, with the exception of unaligned units, every unit in your army is a Space Wolf unit. So you get Savage Fury, while the Assault Doctrine is active, an unmodified roll of a 6 for an attack made with a melee weapon uh, scores an additional hit. So you get Exploding 6s in melee, and then your Hunter is unleashed in any turn in which this uh, unit charged, may charged, or made a heroic intervention, you get plus 1 hit. And you can make heroic interventions within 6 for your characters. Vanguard roller traits are the same, and then we're into some Space Wolf stratagems. And there's a couple of cool new ones. I, there's, some of these are just the Space Marine ones basically added in, but a couple of these are super cool. Uh, Duty Eternal, use stratagem in any phase in which a Space Wolves Dreadnought model in your army is chosen as target of attack until the end of the phase. You can half the damage, same as the other Venerable Dread one. 
Uh, Veteran Intercessor is the same as the other one. Bolt Storm is the same. Rapid Fire is the same. Big Guns Never Tire is the same. Hammer of Wrath is the same. Hero of the Chapter, use this strategy before the battle. Um, select one spaceless character model from your army. It's not your Warlord. Didn't get a Warlord trait. Same as the Space Marine one. Fury of the Champion, same as Fury of the First. You get plus one hit rolls for Terminators. Uh, now, that's what I like. It's zero CPs. Knowledge of the Foe. Use this strategy in the fight phase when an enemy character is destroyed by an attack made by a spaceless model in your army. You get a command point because you eat his brain and you get to steal a command point from him. It's so it's free, which I love, and it's so space marine. I love that. I just love it. That's that's a, that's a great strategy just for like a character. Like it's cool in the game, but it's also just from a character. Like it's characterful. I like it. Um, counter charge for one CP. Use strategy in your opponent's charge phase and uh, select one space loose unit from your army until the end of that phase. You can perform a heroic intervention as opposed to character and can go six instead of three. Crushing Assault, use a strategy in your charge phase when a Thunderwolf Cavalry unit from your army finishes a charge move. For each model in that unit, you can select one enemy unit within one inch of that model. Uh, model and roll D6 on a 2 plus, take a mortal wound, so you do your impact hits. Touch of the Wild, use a strategy in the fight phase, select one Space Wolves character model in your army until the end of that phase. When resolving an attack move of that model, unmodified hit roll of 4 plus gets an additional hit. That's pretty cool. It doesn't need the Assault Doctrine to be active either, he just gets 4 plus double hits basically. Um, and any character could do it. So, 10 attack Ragnar could do double hits on fours with 10 attacks. <laughs> it's pretty blitzy. Um, vicious Executioners for 1 CP. Use strategy in the fight phase when a Wolf Guard unit from your army is chosen to fight with until the end of that phase when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit against an infantry unit. A modified roll of 6 does a mortal wound in addition to nor any other damage. So... That's that's pretty great. In the fight phase, you could take Lightning Claw Terminators or something like that, or even just Lightning Claw Dudes, or even just a big fat unit of Wolf Guard with Chain Swords, and all of your sixes would do a mortal wound, uh, in addition to your normal damage. Pack Hunters for 1 CP. Use strategy in the fight phase when a Fenrisian Wolf or Cyber Wolf unit is chosen to fight until the end of that phase when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit. If that unit's within 3 inches of a friendly Space Wolves Infantry unit or Space Wolves Cavalry unit, you can roll a hit roll. Uh, Storm Strike for 1 CP. It's a Storm Fang gunship in your army. Uh, it's chosen to shoot until the end of that phase. Resolving an attack made with the Hellfrost Destructor, add one of the hit wounded damage rolls. That's a pretty cool 1 CP ability for the Destructor. Uh, 1 CP for Gene Rot Might, same as the regular Space Marine one. Target sighted for 3 CPs. Use Strategy at the start of your shooting phase. Select an Intercessor unit from your army until the end of the phase. Stalker Bolt Rifles, not uh, models are equipped with, gain the following ability. Can shoot characters and get 6s. To, sorry, wound rolls of six do a mortal wound addition to normal damage. So you get your like your sniper rifle intercessors basically with stalker bolt rifles. Hunter Slayer missiles is the same, skilled riders is the same. Um, you get a four plus invulnerable save against ranged weapons uh, until starting next movement phase. And three plus if they advance. Uh, one CB for death grip bite. You charge him in the fight phase when a Thunderwolf Cavalry unit from your army is chosen to fight with until the end of that phase, crushing teeth and claws uh, have a damage characteristic of two. Steady Advance for 1 CP. Uh, use this one uh, Space Wolf Infantry unit from your army is chosen to shoot with until the end of that phase. You get Stationary Bolter Discipline, so same as the other uh, Space Marine one. Transhuman Physiology, again the same thing. Skyfire is the same. Vengeance the Machine Spirit is the same. Uh, and that is it. So, a couple new ones. I like the fact that, I like the Death Grip Bite. I really like Knowledge of the Foe. Um, and even like the pack hunters, I mean, no, people aren't really using Federation Wolves and Cyber Wolves, but Touch of the Wild is really good for 1 CP. The 4 plus additional hits, pretty great for characters. Uh, Obscuration Discipline is just the Vanguard one. Litany's of Battles are the same except for the unique one for Space Wolves. Tales of the Wolf King and the Lord of the Deeps this is the one where uh, Lehman Russ uh, wrestles the Kraken out from underneath the Fang and then throws it back because he says it's too small. <laughs> If this lightning is inspiring, select one friendly Space Wolves unit uh, within six of this model. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in that unit against a monster or vehicle, add one of the damage characteristic. That's pretty cool. Plus one damage against monsters and vehicles because you're fighting the Kraken. And we got our relics. Uh, so what do we got? So we got a bunch of Space Wolves relics. These are added to the ones in the book. Uh, most of them replace different weapons. Some don't. And you've got your generic ones that all Space Marines are getting to, like the mantle and stuff here. So the, man, the Mountain Breaker Helm, <coughs> it's for an infantry character only, after you've resolved the bearer's attacks in the fight phase, but before they consolidate, you can select one enemy unit within one inch of the bearer and roll a d6. On a 2+, plus, they d3 mortal wounds. Invisibility destroys an enemy character and the bearer's your warlord. Treat the bearer as having performed a deed of legend. So you get your deed of legend for free, basically, no matter what it is. Talisman of the Storms, Marine Priest only. After resolving the first Psych Power for the Bear in your Psych Phase, roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 12 of the Bear. On a 4+, plus, the enemy unit suffers a mortal wound. 
So basically, when you do your psychic powers, you just start to like just choke lightning everywhere. Um, good for late game when you're surrounded. Uh, the Worm Splitter replaces a Power Axe. Uh, it is plus one strength, minus two AP, and two damage. Abilities when I'm resolving attack against a monster vehicle. This has a damage characteristic of four. Whoa! Storm Song uh, replaces a Mastercrafted Stalker Bolt Rifle um, and goes to 36 inches, heavy one, strength six, minus three, three damage, and can target characters even if they're not closest. Weird Bane, Rune Sword only, uh, plus one strength, minus four uh, save, and D3 damage. Resolving attack made with this weapon, you can reroll the wound roll. In addition, if the target's a Psyker, it has a damage characteristic of flat three. So pretty good for fighting, imagine Tyranids. Like you go into like a hive target to Psyker, and just stab the hell out of them. Adamantine Mantle, five plus wound shrug, runic armor, two plus save, five plus invul, uh, the standard stuff. Morkai's teeth bolts. When you give a model this relic, select one bolt weapon they're armed with. When the model's chosen to shoot with, you can choose to shoot Morkai's teeth bolt. If you do this, you can only make one attack, but if a hit scored, target suffers a mortal wound, and that unit's marked by Morkai until the end of the turn. Resolving attack made by a unit's marked with Morkai, re-roll a wound roll of one. That's pretty cool. So you can basically pull somebody out. You want to get like a long range-ish weapon, and then mark units to be rerolling ones to wound against. It's kind of like having like a battle leader anywhere, <laughs> if you want. Mastercraft weapon, so the usual thing, plus one damage. Digital weapons, same as the other digital weapons, mortal wound. Uh, Companion's blade, model with a power sword, a mastercraft power sword only. It becomes plus two strength, minus three save, two damage. When resolving an attack made with this weapon, if the bear is within three inches of another friendly space wolf's character, you roll the wound roll. And a wolf tail talisman, man, they're back! This was like a third edition codex thing. Everybody used to get wolf tail talismans to cancel psychic powers. Uh, when a psych test is taken for an enemy model within 18 inches of a model from your army with this relic, subtract two from the test. That's, that's actually pretty great. Minus two with an 18 for that model. Ugh, that's a, that's a reason to, to take that right there. There's some armies that'll just completely hamper. And then we got all our point values. And again, this is just pause the video. I'm not, uh, I'm not going through this. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a lot of stuff. I don't know what's changed. I'm just gonna add up my list when I play Owen this week and I'm not gonna bother trying to think about it too much. And our name generator, what is my Space Wolf name? Hi is the black one, 42. Uh, my special name is Joran16. Joran Red Howl. I'm into it. That's what I'll call my special captain for the next game. And we're into the orcs. And again, the orcs, uh, it's actually a bit shorter even than the Space Wolves one. Um, we got Gaz and Makari. So Gaz, he's basically a monster now because it's literally his head on a giant robot, which, I mean, I love that. Um, and he's pretty tough. He was spoiled on Warhammer Community, so I'm not going to spend too much time on him. But he's movement 7 inches, 2 plus 5 plus. Strength 7, tough, uh, toughness 7. Tough seven is pretty huge. 12 wounds, 5 attacks, leadership 8, 2 plus save. Um, he seems kind of squishy until you read his special rules. He's got Mork's Roar, which is giant gun, assault 12. It's an assault 12 heavy bolter. Strength 5, minus 1, 1 damage. Uh, Gork's Claw, he's strength times 2, so he's strength 14, minus 4, 4 damage with 5 attacks. Uh, and then his stick bombs, he's just got grenades. Uh, D6, 3, AP, 0, 1 damage. He's got Irigo, Mob Rule, and Daka 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 from the Codex Orcs. And then his Great Wa, friendly orc infantry units within 6 of this model can be chosen to charge with, even if they advance this turn. In addition, add one of the attack characteristic of models in friendly orc infantry units while they're within six of this model if their uh, unit made a charge. The boss is watching. When a friendly orc unit within six of this model fails a morale test, this model can restore a brutal display of violence, same as the regular war boss one. Take D3 on wounds. And the prophet Gork and Mork, this model is a four plus invul. In addition, this model can only lose a maximum of four wounds in each phase. So if, as long as he's not in melee, it's going to be at least turn three before he can die. And it takes four shooting or three shooting phases to kill him, basically. Goths are the best, so we roll uh, hit rolls of one for attacks made by melee weapons by friendly Goths within six of this model. And the Grand War Boss, this model can be included in Orc Detachment without preventing them from having the different clan culture. I uh, note, however, this model does not benefit from the clan culture of the detachment. And then he's an Orc Goth, character monster War Boss, and Gazgul Thraka. The hilariousness that is Makari. Now, Makari's been around since the, the original versions of Gazgul as his banner waver. He's the luckiest goblin alive. Uh, we don't even know if Gazgul's aware he's there, he just follows him around all the time. He's 5 inch move, 4 plus, 4 plus, strength up is 3, 4 wounds, 2 attacks, uh, leadership 6 and 6 plus save. Uh, worth noting too, sorry, that Gaz does decline in value. Uh, he goes down to, by, if he's taken 4 wounds, or 8 wounds, he's down to movement 6, strength 6, attack 6, because he gets matter actually, and then movement 5, uh, strength 5, but attack 7. His attacks go up as he gets matter and more damaged. Um, <laughs> Makari's got Gazgul's Wah Banner, um, and Makari's Stabber. 
It's a uh, <laughs> stabber is just a basic melee weapon. Resolving attack made with this weapon. A wound roll of six does D3 mortal wounds because he's just he's he's lucky at stabbing. Uh, and his wall banner, when a model in a friendly goth orc unit within six of this model would lose a wound, uh, and this model is within three inches of friendly Gaskell Thraki unit, roll a d6. On a six, that wound is not lost. So it's not wholly within six. He gives a six plus wound shrug basically to everybody within six of him as long as Gaz is nearby. Accidental figurehead, friendly goth Gretchen units <laughs> can use his model's leadership uh, if they're within 12 of him. Uh, he's suspiciously lucky, has a two plus invul. And keep up, at starting movement phase, if this model is within three inches of Gazgoth Raka, add two to his movement characteristics. So he can keep up, he can move seven. And he's an orc, goth, uh, character, infantry, Gretchen, Gretchen, and Makari. And the Big Mac's back! And the Big Mac is the same one from the index, so I'm not going to bother going through him. Um, but he's now back in the orc codex, so he's ratified back into the book, basically. Gaz is 285 for points, Makari is 65, and your Big Mac is going to be 55, and a grotto lure costs four. Orky stratagems, so new strats for the Orc boys, custom job for one CP, a new stratagem before the battle, your army can have one additional custom job, all custom jobs you include must be different, we'll go through custom jobs uh, in a minute after when we get to that section. Uh, one CP for the cleverest boss, use a stratagem before the battle, select one big mech in your army, add one of that model's wounds and attack characteristic and change its weapon skill to two plus. Use a stratagem once per battle and only if your army does not include mech boss Buzzgob because he's got that already basically. <clears throat> One CP for a grot bumper, because they strap a grot to the front of a car. Use a strategy in your opponent's shooting phase. When attack made with a ranged weapon successfully wounds a boom deck, a snaz wagon model in your army. The saving throw is automatically passed. Each unit can only benefit from the strategy once per battle, because <laughs> it just kills the grot instead. Uh, one CP for temperamental shock drive. Use strategy uh, in your shooting phase after shooting with a shock jump dragster. That unit immediately advances on a result of a 4+. Plus. And, this, and the result is 4+, plus. don't roll. Uh, one CP for the biggest boss, use strategy before the battle, select a war boss model in your army, add one to his wounds and attacks, and give him a 4 plus invul save. Yay, your war boss can have an invul! Uh, and only if you don't have gas, because gas becomes the biggest boss otherwise. One CP for a clever spanner, use strategy before the battle, select one Luda or Burner unit from your army that contains nine models, uh, or nine or less models for one CP, or one Luda's or Burner's model um, that has ten or more models for two CPs. While the unit contains one or more spanners, you can reroll one additional die and discard one when determining the number of the shots for their burners or death guns. Each unit can only be selected for the strategy once per battle. So basically, he tunes up their guns and their burners and makes them shoot better. Once you be for the burning highway, use strategy in your shooting phase when a custom boost a blast unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. And at the end of your next turn, charge uh, change the characteristic of that unit's burners exhaust to 10 inch range, assault 3, strength 5, minus 1. The flying headbutt, you can crush your, <laughs> you can crash your own planes. You just charge him at the end of your movement phase, select an orc unit from your army that has the flyer battlefield roll. This model reduces to zero wounds and automatically crashes and burns. You just kamikaze them in. Once you be for full speed, lads, you just charge him in your charge phase after charging with an orc biker or death killer war trike. Uh, you, until the end of the turn, add one of their strength. Once you be for squig bombs, you just charge him in your movement phase after moving a blitz bomb off model from your army. Until the end of the phase, add one of the rolls made for the model's boom bomb ability. Two CBs for special shells. Use this strategy in your shooting phase when a flash gets here from your army is chosen to shoot. Until the end of the phase, increase the range of snaz guns by 12 inches. One CB for patch up. Use this strategy at the end of the, or the start of any turn. Select one Morkonaut, Gorkonaut, or Stomp unit from your army. Until the end of that turn, the model is considered to have double the number of remaining wounds for the damage table to get it back running, basically. Two CBs for unstoppable momentum. Use strategy in your charge phase when an orc unit from your army has finished a charge move and dealt one or more mortal wounds to an enemy unit. If that orc is no longer within one, it can immediately be chosen to charge with again. <laughs> so if you run somebody over with one of your de like mortal wounding things, you can charge twice. Once you be for wildfire, use strategy in your movement phase after selecting an enemy model for a uh, unit with the burn -a bombs ability of a burn -a bomber uh, unit from your army. Select one of the other enemy unit within six inches of that uh, unit that you selected. Select uh, roll one d six for each model of that unit up to a maximum of ten dice for each five plus. Take a mortal wound. The strategy is not affected by the arsonist subculture, which we'll talk about later. One CP for the Dread Death Machine. Um, that is, use a strategy in the fight phase when a Death Dreads unit from your army is chosen to fight with. To the end of the phase, each time that enemy unit model is destroyed as a result of an attack made by that unit, you can immediately make an additional attack against the same target using the same weapon. These additional attacks them cannot themselves generate any further attacks. And then hit them harder for one CP. Use strategy in the fight phase when a Mega Knobs unit from your army is chosen to fight with until uh, the end of the phase, add one of the damage cursor from their melee weapons. Their power claws become like damage four. And we're into specialist mobs. Okay, so 
Specialist mobs basically replace your clan subculture. Um, some orcs form specialist mobs. They have the, the same interests, basically. Um, when you're including a clan unit in your army, instead of nominating the clan that unit's from, you can instead nominate the specialist mob that it's from. It then simply replaces the clan keyword in every instance in that unit's data sheet with the one chosen here. So they're almost like sub-clans. Like you, you would become a specialist mob, so your detachment would become whatever this word is. Now, units that aren't listed here and can't become that specialist detachment don't break the other units in the detachment from having a clan, a clan subculture. Um, so, for example, if you want to take a Tinhead um, war boss, uh, then that Tinhead war boss would, all of the things that affect clans on his data sheet would then become Tinhead. So, for like his breaking heads one would be Tinhead units instead of whatever his clan units are. Uh, if your army's battleforged, all clan units from your army in an orc detachment can get a subculture instead of a clan culture. As long as every unit in that detachment is from the same specialist mob, the subculture gained depends upon what mob they're from. So, for instance, all units from a pyromaniac detachment gain the, the arsonist clan culture. Um, and uh, if you this, if some specialist mobs specify that uh, model, what models can benefit from subculture, this does not benefit or prevent you from including other mobs models from the same specialist mob in the detachment. They just don't get any benefits. So, like, if you had like a war boss and it doesn't affect war bosses, they still get the name and they they become that subculture. They just don't get the benefit for whatever it is. All right, so. Uh, let's talk about the subcultures. There's the Pyromaniacs, the Hunters, the Boom Boys, the Fly Boys, the Grot Mobs, the Tin Eds, the Feral Orcs, and the Mad Boys. So for Pyromaniacs, you become Arsonists. You can reroll any and all of the dice when determining the number of shots made for Burnas, Scorches, Burna bo uh, Bottles, and Burn Exhaust, Killer Jets, and Scorcher Missiles. I've crypt on a model with a unit you know, with the subculture. When resolving an attack made by a melee weapon profile for these things, you can reroll the Wound Roll. When resolving the Burna ability for this subculture, add one to the each roll for the Burna Bobs. Uh, Hunters are sneaky devils, uh, infantry models, excluding Gretchen. Uh, whilst a model from uh, this subculture is on a within a train feature, it gets a five boss invul. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model of this subculture, while that model is on a train feature uh, in the target's unit or on or within a train, sorry, if or any model in the target units uh, within that train feature, improve the target's uh, arm penetration characteristic by one. Sorry, improve the weapon's arm penetration uh, by one. So basically, when you're in cover or in terrain, you get a five plus invul, and when you're in terrain or attacking units in terrain, you get plus one AP in your melee weapons. Boom boys get blow it up, improve the strength and arm penetration characteristic of rockets and stick bomb weapons. Um, so these are things that have rocket or stick bomb in the name. Um, as well as tank buster bombs, wing missiles, cannons, kill cannons, def cannons, de boomer, lavas equipped with uh, unmodels in this unit with a subculture by one, so you're minus one AP basically. Note that for combat weapons, only the, the rocket profile is affected. Flyboys, Crucial Velocity, a very good clutch song as well. Uh, I wonder if that's a clutch reference, because I don't, Crucial Velocity is not a very common saying. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a clutch reference. My, my buddy Owen will know. Not that Owen. Uh, fly models only when resolving an attack made with a weapon, a uh, ranged weapon against a unit for, with this subculture by a model that's more than one inch away. That unit's treated as having the benefit of cover to its saving throw. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon against a unit with a subculture in a turn in which uh, it was more than one inch away from the enemy unit at the start of the charge, subtract one from the hit roll. So basically you're, you're very fast. Your grot mobs, cheeky zoggers, aggression models only. Uh, models in a unit with this subculture get a six plus invul. When resolving an attack by a vehicle model in a unit with this subculture, reroll hit rolls of one. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's a reason to take a big vehicle mob with grot mobs. That's pretty awesome. Ten heads, crush and crump. It affects kill cans, death dreads, mega armor, morconauts, gorgonauts, and stompas only. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in this subculture, add one of the hit rolls. Plus one hit, melee. Feral Orcs, you get Wild Boys, War Bosses, Weird Boys, Knobs, and Boys only, excluding Bikers and Mega Armor Knobs. Um, models in a unit with a subculture can pile in up to six inches. When making an advanced roll for a unit in the subculture, roll two additional dice and discard the, the two of the results. So basically, you roll three pick. And then Mad Boys, Frantic, Infantry and Biker units only, excluding Gretchen. At the start of each battle round, roll 1d3 and consult the table below to see what they're doing. <laughs> this roll cannot be rerolled. So Moronics, when resolving an attack, I don't one. <laughs> when resolving an attack uh, that targets a unit with this subculture, I wanted the saving throw. They get plus one save because they're just too dumb to feel the pain. Two Nutters, they automatically pass morale check. And three Frenzies, add one of the strength characteristic of models in a unit with this subculture. It's, it's so random, but it's fun. And then we're looking at custom jobs. Okay, <clears throat> so custom jobs basically are a reason to take a mechboy workshop. If your army includes one or more mech workshops, you can give one of the following custom jobs to an orc unit from your army. 
In addition, you can take custom jobs by using the stratagem, but everyone has to have a different one. Uh, you can't have the same custom job more than once. Both the ones that replace weapons, replace the models existing weapons. If a unit has a custom job, um, it's treated as a separate unit. Once you're deployed, um, all those units retain that same custom job. So like for instance, if you have a mob of uh, Death Dreads and that unit gets a custom job, when they deploy separately, the three of them still can't take custom job. It's not like one of them gets them and the other two just wander off and don't get it. So squig hide tires, speed freaks, including named characters and units that can fly, battle wagons, gun wagons, bone breakers, and trucks get two to the plus, to, uh, sorry, uh, would get plus two to their move characteristics. You can pick one of those things and get plus two move. A souped up special, it's for a boom deck, a snaz wagon only. Uh, your souped up special replaces their mech special. Range 30, assault 15, strength four, minus one, one damage. A gyroscopic whirly gig, it's for a shock drum dagsta only. Uh, use the shock tunnel ability while advancing, even if it did not roll a four plus. In addition, this team does not suffer any mortal wounds from the shock tunnel. <laughs> I like this one. Sizzly rivets, <laughs> custom boost of blast only. When resolving an attack move with a rivet cannon by a model in this unit, a modified wound roll of six inflicts a mortal wound in addition to any normal damage. So that's pretty cool. The corkscrew for a mega track scrap jet unit only. The first time this unit finishes a consolidation move in each fight phase, it can immediately fight again. Uh, nitro powered squigs, a uh, rocket truck squig buggy only. When re uh, resolving an attack made by this unit, squig launcher, heavy squig launcher, add one to the wound roll. Gork's roar for a death killer war trike only. Add four to the range characteristic of this model's killer jet and range type characteristic for its burner profile is to assault six. So four inches added to its range for the killer jet, and uh, the type characteristic is now assault six instead. So longer range and shootier. The Boomer for Battle Wagon, Bonebreaker, Gun Wagon only, it replaces their Kill Cannon. It's a 36 inch range, heavy 2d6, strength 8, minus 2, flat 2 damage. The Zag Zap for a Battle Wagon, Bonebreaker, Gun Wagon model with a Zap Cannon, uh, replaces it with the Zag Zap. 36 inch range, heavy 1, 2d6, strength, minus 3, save, 3 damage. And abilities when resolving attack me with this weapon, it automatically hits. Before firing this weapon, roll a determined strength. Uh, if the result's a 9 plus, do not make a wound roll, it does 3 mortal wounds. The Forktress, <laughs> Battle Wagon, Bone Breaker, or Gun Wagon only. This model is a 3 plus save and a 5 plus invol. The Pincha, for Grab and Claw, it's plus 1 strength, minus 3 save, d6 damage. Abilities, each time the sparrow fights, it can only make a single attack with this weapon. Resolving attack with this weapon, add 3 to the hit roll if a target is a monster or vehicle. The Red Rolla, for a Bone Breaker only, replace the model's Bone Breaker Ram with the following Red Rolla when, the stack, uh, when this model makes a charge move, add 6 to its attack characteristic. Orchimatic Pistons, <laughs> Killicans, Death Dreads, or Morkonauts, Gorkonauts only, add three to their move characteristic, you can roll advanced rolls. The Sparkly Bits for Killicans, Death Dreads, Morkonauts, and Gorkonauts, uh, improve their ballistic skill by one, for, so a five would become a four. Dirty Gubbins, uh, Killicans and Death Dreads only, when resolving attack me with a ranged weapon against this unit, subtract one for the hit roll, because basically your exhaust is so thick they can't see you. Slug Gubbins, Gorkonaut only, Slug Gubbins replaces this model's Death Storm Mega Shooter and has the following profile, 36 inch range, heavy 24, strength 6, minus 1, and 1 damage, and ability when resolving attack me with this weapon. If it targets within 12 inches of the bearer, add 1 to the hit roll. A Gog Claw, Gorkonaut and Morkonaut only, uh, when, result, when rolling to determine the damage characteristic, a result of less than 4 is a 4. And then the Blitz of Gatla, Stompa only, this model's Super Gatla has a damage characteristic of 2, in addition when rolling for their Psycho Dacoblastic and reroll the d6 once per phase. And then you get your sweet clan psychic powers. The Goths get Bull Charge, warp value 6. If you manifest it, select one friendly Goth unit within 18 of the Psyker. Uh, until the end of the turn, charges of less than 7 are automatically 7. The Death Skulls get Maniacal Seizures, <laughs> warp charge 7. Uh, if selected, uh, sorry, if manifested, select an enemy unit within 18 of the Psyker until the end of the phase, until the start of the next Psyker phase. When resolving an attack made by that unit, subtract 1 from the hit roll. And resolving an attack made by a friendly Death Skulls unit uh, against that unit, their arm penetration characteristic is improved by one. The bad moons get Gleam and Gear. Uh, has a warp charge of six. If manifested, select a friendly bad moon unit within 18 of the Psyker. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, when resolving an attack made against that unit, add one to the saving throw. Invulnerable saving throws are unaffected. And Snake Bites get Constriction. Warp charge six. If manifested, select an enemy unit within 12 of the Psyker. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, have their attack characteristics. Oof. Evil Sun's Visions in the Smoke, uh, Warp Charge 6, if manifested, select one friendly Evil Sun's vehicle within 12 inches of the Psyker. You only select a unit with a wounds characteristic of 18 or more if the result of the Psyker test was 9 or more. 
Well, uh, until the start of your next take phase, when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit, you can reroll the hit rolls. And then Blood Axe's Clever Talker has a warp charge of six. If manifested, select one enemy unit uh, visible to the Psyker until the start of your next psych phase. They yet cannot fire Overwatch at Blood Axe units uh, from your army and cannot be chosen to fight until all eligible Blood Axe units have been, <laughs> have been chosen to do so. He just like talks his way into the middle of them and just starts punching them. And then Freeboaters, the Jolly Orcs Glare. Jolly Orcs Glare has a warp charge of six. If manifested, select one enemy unit with an 18 of the Psyker until the end of your next Psychic phase. Have the move characteristic for models in that unit and subtract one from advance and charge rolls. And we got our Orky Name Generator. All right, what's my Orky Name? Uh, 24, so Zag, Zargruk, 16. Zargruk, the Ard. <laughs> oh, Orcs, you're amazing. And that's it. Our Psychic Awakening for the Orcs and the Space Wolves. Um, so yeah, our latest update now for Warhammer 40k, uh, Saga of the Beast. Uh, if you play Space Wolves and Orcs, this is probably for you. Uh, lots of neat new stuff. I, it, it is a lot of like trying to make units that aren't super prevalently being used right now, like the Mechs Workshop and stuff, I think have some value, which I think is good. Like you, The custom jobs are free. The problem with the Orc Mech Shop right now is that you have to sit and not do anything for a turn to get something out of it. If for 80 points and a CP, you could have two of those like better guns or better relics basically for your vehicles, it could be worth doing. Um, I think more worth doing, obviously, for if you're taking bigger vehicles like the uh, Bone Breaker, the, you know, the big, like, um, the big fighty tanks versus... You know, if you're just gonna make it, if you're gonna spend 80 points to make a shock jump dragster better, I don't know if that's worth it. But having that super zap gun or kill cannon, that might be pretty cool. Or just having the three plus five plus invul in your vehicle, also pretty cool. So anyway, big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more uh, Warhammer 40,000 and GMG reviews in the future. Thanks, Alan Ash. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathbird Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.